to talk about uh, barrel programming, uh, specifically CUDA. We'll talk like about what all of this is. So this is our table of content. Uh, can you see through my screen or? Okay. No, yes, so this is my table of content. Today we'll go like introduction, talk about introduction, what is CUDA and then why is CUDA, the grids, blocks, and threads, uh, what is host and the device. And then we like the main part of the session that we will write a CUDA program uh, from scratch. Uh, so I will show you like how, how we can do it. But before we go uh, deep into this, so let's start with the concept of parallel programming. So like usually when you are doing something on your uh, CPU, uh, your CPU or your processor have like some core, uh, like maybe eight cores, it can be four cores, eight cores, whatever it can be. And each core can do like a sequential uh, set of instructions. So like if you are program anything or, or you are doing anything, so like, all of your code will go like one by one, like a line by line. That's what we usually do, or that's what usually our uh, CPU is doing. So to introduce the concept of barrel programming, so imagine that we have uh, two queues uh, of people, as we can see here. Uh, the first queue is uh, six people, and the second is six people. So like we have uh, a total of uh, 12 people. And imagine that we have a one clock machine and each one take one second to receive his uh, Coca-Cola. So for example, uh, this uh, 12 people will take like 12 seconds. But imagine if we have uh, a two clock machine. So like now we will like take like the halves of the time that we take with uh, one clock machine. So uh, the code machine here is represent uh, the number of uh, cores we have like in, inside our uh, CPU. Uh, the more cores we have, like the more parallel uh, uh, bro uh, programs that we can initiate at the same time. So here is also uh, like some comparison between CPU and GPU. Like we talked about CPU, but we didn't talk about GPU. So like. Uh, as we said, like our CPU can be Intel uh, i7, can be AMD, whatever. It can have like four to eight cores. Uh, and it's very good in doing sequential processes. However, if you want to do like a parallel process, so like GPU would be better. GPU like can have like hundreds or thousands of uh, cores uh good for parallel processing of your operation but uh like there is a difference between them so like traditional programmings are written uh for cpu is sequential however for a gpu to write a program for uh that run on a gpu it needs like additional software to convert the cpu function to the gpu and we'll talk about this in more details so here's also like, as you can see, like if we have a CPU, it can like maybe eight cores, but as you can see here, like all of these small tiny pieces are, you can like, you can represent it as a course. So we have like in our GPU, like thousands of course, it can reach like 65,000 uh, core. It's also like depending on like the GPU uh, that you have. So, like, uh, those are the manufacturer of uh, the GPUs in the world. We have, like, Intel, we have AMD, and we have NVIDIA. However, uh, our talking probably will be on uh, NVIDIA. We'll focus on NVIDIA. NVIDIA, I believe, like, it's one of, uh, like, uh, the, great, the greatest companies uh, in this field. Uh, Actually, like its uh, net worth now is exceeding uh, one trillion, one uh, billion, I believe, like one uh, billion dollar. Yeah. Uh, so like it's or one trillion even. I don't remember like the number. Uh, so like it's it's really uh, a very big company. And if you are into gaming, probably will uh, use like one of the Nvidia GPUs that they provide. Uh, what make NVIDIA special, uh, I believe that they make their uh, GPUs uh, 
uh, accessible not only by gamers, but also by researchers in uh, the uh, artificial intelligence field or and, and a lot of other fields. And that's give us a huge advantage in developing new stuff and more powerful stuff and leveraging everything uh, into like uh, a future world. So here is like, like a typical uh, NVIDIA uh, GPU. It can be like for uh, your PC or it can be like for uh, your laptop. Uh, for sure, like for laptop, it will be uh, different. And it will have like a number and this uh, number is like, uh, like it tells you like how much memory do you have, how, 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 what generation is this GPU and and uh, all of this stuff. So like, like it's uh, telling you like how powerful is your GPU uh, in general. So what is CUDA? CUDA stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. CUDA is a platform and programming uh, model for CUDA enabled GPU. So like it's kind of a programming language, but uh, that utilizes the GPU. Uh, so you can make like your uh, computations on it. Uh, so uh, CUDA is also used CPUs and GPU at the same time. Uh, CUDA is, it looks like C language. You will see like if, if you could before with uh, a C language, you, you will see like there is a minor difference between them. However, uh, CUDA have like a different compiler. Uh, so like NVIDIA like made uh, like a different compiler uh, to compile CUDA. Uh, so why CUDA? The answer is so simple, CUDA. Uh, can achieve high parallelism and effic efficiency than uh, general purposes. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, CPU. So grids and uh, grids, blocks, and threads. So uh, we talked about that if we have a CPU, it can have an eight cores, for example, and each core we can do on this course, uh, like a parallel uh, programs. However, our limitation will be like eight parallel computations at the same time. If we will use like uh, the parallel, parallelism of uh, through the CPU. But for the CUDA, uh, we have uh, a grid. This grid contains blocks and we have uh, each block have like a thread and each thread represent a core like the CPU. So uh, imagine that a block that have uh, 1024 uh, thread. So in this block, we have 1024 parallel computation we can do at the same time. And we don't have only one block, we have like like thousands of uh, blocks. So that's make the CUDA like, uh, like have more cores or we can like, we can do like a uh, parallel programming, parallel uh, uh, programming like uh, more efficiently than uh, the CPU. So to uh, explain uh, more about the blocks and threads, okay. Uh, to explain more about the blocks and threads. So like we have a grid, we have like multiple grid. We can have like even like three, for example, grid. And like, imagine like a 3D cube. So uh, each grid, uh, like maybe on the top of each other, each grid can have like a number of blocks and each block can have uh, a number of uh, a number of threads. And this depend mainly on uh, your GPU. So you like need like also to maybe uh, see like the architecture of your uh, GPU. However, like mostly it will be uh, 1024 thread bare block, I believe. And the number of block will uh, like vary. Uh, so about uh, host uh, and device, what is host and what is device? 
So the host is, uh, we, we, we said before, before like we go into this, we said before that CUDA is using CPU and is using GPU at the same time. So like we call the CPU as the host and we call the GPU as device. So what is the idea behind this? The idea behind this is that uh, in order to utilize or doing a computation on the GPU, the GPU have its own memory and the CPU also like have its own memory, which is the cache, for example. So if you are doing uh, a program, it can like get your uh, from the RAM or, or from the cache uh, of the CPU. And we need like to transfer this data to the GPU in order to do the computations on the GPU. So like these steps you will always do. Step one is to copy the data from the host, which is the CPU, to the device, which is your GPU. Second step is doing the computation on the device, doing the computation on the GPU. And last step is copy the results back to uh, the host. Uh, in like in order to, so you can like uh, process it or, or see it. Uh, so this is about the host and device. So without like uh, going more into details, so I I prefer that we go and start like uh, like a practical task. So let me open. Can you see like my window, my new window? Okay. So let's open a folder. So let's start. We will like, as any language, we'll create like, um, we'll do like firstly like a hello world uh, for CUDA. And like, so we can grasp the concept more. And then we'll go like do another application, which is uh, Victor addition. We'll like, add uh, a, a very big vectors together. We will like maybe a, a vector of a size of 100 million. We'll add like two vector of a size 100 million together. And we'll do this operation once on the CPU and once on the GPU. And we'll like uh, calculate the time for each to see like uh, the difference between them. So let's start first with the hello world program. Hello, CUDA. Dot CU. The extension for a CUDA program is uh, CU. So let's start. So we just, as I said before, like it's. Uh, by the way, CUDA can be used. Uh, CUDA can be used like with many programming languages. Can be used with Python, with C, C plus uh, plus, or even uh, MATLAB. Uh, however, the CUDA is uh, based on C, as uh, we said before. So, like maybe if you found some stuff that you can utilize CUDA with or Python, probably it will be built on uh, C. So let's start. We'll write like CUDA program. We'll just like uh, import uh, standard I/O uh, library, so we can uh, use the print function. So what is the difference between a CUDA uh, program and uh, a normal normal like uh, CV program? So like, for example, if I will, uh, our structure for a normal C program is that we will write uh, something like this, we'll CPU. Uh, CPU is our this is a normal function and we can print, uh, we can print anything. So hello from CPU. So if anyone can write C like, you know, like this is pretty uh, straightforward. And in order uh, to call this uh, function, we'll need our main. And we can call it like this, hello. Hello CPU. This is like pretty straightforward. What we are doing right now, like we didn't do anything. We just like 
like uh, define the function and we call it here. And if I will like uh hello let's see it's hello and this is hello cool. if we will like compile this and we'll call it it will run a look from cpu normal sorry i forgot to add so this is a pretty straightforward uh Oh, well, I need to combine it again. Okay. So uh, that's a really uh, straightforward for you. So like, what is the difference between like writing a, a normal function like this and a CUDA function? So the, the difference would be that we will need something called global like this. This global is uh, telling the host that this function will be executed on the other side, which is the GPU. So, hello. GPU. So, this function is mainly So if I will make like this, no GPU, then how like this is like a pretty close to what we did before, but the difference is that this hello GPU is now executing on the other side, which is uh, the uh, GPU. However, there is also a small change. We need to add these three brackets and we need to define two uh, numbers here. So the first number is block size and second number is threads pair So what is this? So here we are defining the number of cores that we have. So like if we multiply these two numbers together, we will have like the number of cores that we can uh, take to uh, execute this function. So let's define this block size. Let's see block size. So let's imagine that we will use like one block and one string per uh, this block. And so if we compiled and played, uh, we will not see anything from here. And let me show you, like it will not enter the, or, or it will not show anything from uh, the hello uh, CPU. It will show only from the hello CPU, but nothing from the hello uh, from GPU. Why is that happening? It's because that uh, like the, the processor or the CPU, it just come here and it doesn't wait uh, for the GPU to finish its program. So what we need to do is that we need to do the device for this function. So what is this function is doing? It just tell it like uh, wait until the GPU, like just it blocks the CPU until uh, the GPU finish. So like if we uh, build again, just we will build again. And now it will uh, write hello from GPU. So this is like a very uh, simple hello world. Like this is like only like uh, like a GPU. Like we we are just printing it from uh, the GPU. However, what if we make like this three 
and this three. So we are expecting this uh, to run nine times, actually. And if we did this, we will see that it run nine times, as you can see here. And this nine times, they are running barrel in parallel. However, uh, like we have like a three blocks. We used here three blocks and three threads per block. So like we have total, like we have a block that have three threads, another block and another block. And so we have a total of nine, uh, like nine cores. So we want to know like which one is uh, this core. So like, let me introduce something else. It's called block IDX. So what is this? CUDA is allowing us, uh, CUDA is defining a variable that allowing us to know uh, when this function is executing, which block is executing this function and which thread is executing this function. So let us try to know uh, like maybe uh, which block and which uh, hello from block. Thread. So here we will say like this block IDX. It will tell us like in which block we are executing this like uh, kernel right now and at which uh, thread we will ex uh, execute it right now. So this is a block and this is a thread idx dot x. Uh, so what we expect here is that we will see like a different number. So we'll see like a block zero, block one, block two, and thread zero, thread one, thread two, and so on for like uh, all the others. And another thing to mention that uh, this we will not have like them in a sequential way. So like block two, uh, thread number two can be the first one which uh, is print, and like every time you can have a random values. Why we we can have this? It's because that. Um, like the first one we access, it, it just will print. And they are, uh, all of them are like uh, executing in parallel. So like no one will be like, like the, the first one, uh, like not for sure will be the first one. It can be, but, but not for sure. It have like a low probability to be the first one uh, each time. So, okay. Okay, let's just run and see. Okay, so as we can see here, so uh, block two, thread zero. Let me know what is happening. Okay, thread by the x dot x. Okay. So, incompatible. Why? I don't know like why it's having this problem right now. However, we can just say that. With the device synchronized, just a moment. Because like there is a problem, it's just the blocks are correct. Uh, each block like played three times, but however, the threads is incorrect because like uh, we said that the threads per block is three, so we have three and three, so everything should be like let's just try this. 
I believe like maybe like also like it's worth to mention that could have like many errors probably because sometimes okay just a moment sometimes it's uh your memory uh is full and you can't like uh delete everything so like this error can happen sometime okay however like it's a problem i will fix it later however like i believe like now we can get the idea so this is like a lower uh, example uh but we want maybe like a, a more detailed example and we can which we can see like uh the execution time of each the, on the cpu and on uh the gpu uh, uh so what we can do uh in this So let's start another program. We will call this program Victor. Victor Ambition. Let's see. Okay, so and let's start by defining our header functions, which include under the library. The chrono library, like we, we, we will use like only to uh, print the time. And let's define maybe our vector size. Vector size. We will use a vector size of 100 million. So it's, it's pretty huge number. And we will make the add CPU. This the add CPU will take three vectors. So it will take like three vectors. The first two vectors are the ones that we will uh, add together and C is the result vector that we will take from uh, it. And we will pass also the size of uh, this vector. So size. And this is like, our uh, GPU function. So like how how normally we do this, we'll do it like with a for loop. Normally uh, when we are like add like a vectors together or something, we need like to loop on all the elements of this vector and add them and add it to uh, like the result vector. So this is like a very normal straightforward uh, programming like size and i plus plus so our function will uh, just add a the element of i in vector a and the element of i in vector b add, add them together and add this value to i element in vector c so this will be our uh, cpu function so why it's there is an error ah okay because like here we wrote it's a constant and this shouldn't be constant if we will modify it so now it will work so this is like our function for uh the our uh, CPU. For the GPU, we will write like, as we said before, the global 
which tell like it's 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 called like a kernel, not a function. Here, like when we define a function to be run on the uh, GPU, it's called a kernel. So like we we'll write our uh, kernel here. Actually, it will be like almost the same as here. So like we can just commence here. But here we will name it GPU. So I will write a line and I will explain what is this line. However, like I need like your attention most here because like this is the most important part here. So just bear with me until I write this line. So what am I writing right now? So like we we know that we have like uh, a lot of uh, blocks and each block have like a lot of threads. So we need to know in which uh, or, or we need like to give uh, each element in our uh, vector uh, to be assigned to a specific thread in a specific block. So what we are doing here is that we say that the index of like this element it will be specified by the number of this block. So like for example, we assigned one thousand block. For for instance, we 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 uh, initiated like one thousand block. So for block one, for example, or block zero, block zero, it will have like uh, for example, like two hundred fifty six thread. So the first uh, like 256 uh, element in the vectors that will be uh, added together will be in the zero block and the first 256 thread. So that's what we are defining here. So for example, like block number zero uh, multiply the block dimension it's the block dimension is the number of threads per uh, block and the number of thread in this uh, block. So this will give us like the index. And this index, we can say that the C by the X, A by the X plus B, so here we finished however like we might have like something we need to add that the idx should be always less than the vector size because like we can assign a number of cores or a number the total number of threads can be more than the vector size so like we don't want like this uh, like extra course to do like some operations that we we don't have or or to access some elements that uh, we don't have in, in in our vectors. So here we finished our uh, kernel. Let's start with our main that we will uh, call both of the uh, global uh, the, the the functions the function and the kernel. At the end, we will say return zero. And let's start with uh, like calling the first function. Uh, we need just like this is CPU part. So here I'm just like defining uh, a pointers of type float, which we will pass to uh, the function. Let's 
this is the result that we will put the result in and we we'll call it CPU. And we need to just reserve a size uh, for it. So in order to reserve a size on, a, on the CPU, what we do, we write new float. size so now we received like uh like 100 million uh like a space for 100 million of type float for this uh, vector and we will do the same for the others So let's continue. So here we'll just do uh, a normal uh, like uh, loop to initialize our uh, vectors with any random values. Normal for loop, and then we will. We won't like to fill our uh, vectors with a random value, as we said. So for each element, it will have like a random value. This random value can be called as a standard library, and we won't like only this uh, value to be between uh, zero and one. So we we'll write what. And let's. so it means that this random value it can return a value of maximum uh, this number. So when we divide it, so like we ensuring that uh, our range will be between zero and one. So the open source will be like this. Uh, we will do the same for HP, and we'll do the same for HC. Actually, HC, we don't need to do this because like HC is the result, so we, we don't need this line. So what else do we need to do? Uh, now we need only to call uh, the CPU function and the GPU function and this is the time for it. So let's start by just the add CPU. And what we will pass is H A H P and the vectors that we will add the values in it and the vector size. So now we are pretty done with as addition on the CPU. So like this function is just adding together 100 million uh, size vectors together. And we need, uh, last thing we need like just to uh, test the uh, speed of, uh, or, or, or the time it takes. So first time CPU. So this function is just giving me the time right now. And we'll copy this function after you finish. And then we need to Mm -hmm. 
So this time will be the end type CPU minus start. So now we have like the time uh, that uh, this addition take on uh, the CPU. Uh, so we can test it right now and we can print it and see. Fusion and So let's see how uh, many milliseconds it will take. So let's combine first our uh, code vector. To add and do that. So two hundred twenty seven milliseconds. This is the time that uh, this uh, could take for uh, one hundred uh, million uh, addition on the CPU. So let's do the same operation, but on the GPU and see how much time uh, it could uh, take. So uh, let's start by the GPU. However, if you remember the presentation, on the presentation, we said that uh, we need to copy data from host of the CPU to the device and then do the computation there and then copy the results back. So let's go and see how we can achieve this. So let's start with the GPU. Right. I'm so sorry to uh, intervene, uh, Mohammed. Uh, the participants might also want to ask questions about uh, the uh, programming details that you have provided uh, so far. Uh, I know we had an issue at the very beginning. But uh, maybe we might have to uh, divide uh, the uh, presentation and you know leave a segment for uh, the next opportunity, if you don't mind. Okay, no problem. So what we can summarize, what we have here is that when we initiate like uh, the GBU function and uh, we compare the time, the time of the GBU probably will be uh, uh, tenths of the time that it takes on the CPU. So like it can be only 20 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds. And this is like a huge difference when you are doing like a very big operations. Uh, maybe like the technical issues that happened uh, at the beginning of the session didn't make us like uh, be in time because like we have like a delay of uh, 20 minutes. However, we can, I believe like continue this, what we are doing next session. And I'm ready for your uh, questions. Thank you very much uh, for your very, very good presentation. Uh, this was to be expected uh, uh, from someone of your caliber, Mohamed, as you have proved previously that uh, you are fully knowledgeable in this field of robotics, including the parallel programming that uh, you have begun to uh, uh, offer to us today. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's uh, get ready to uh, bring up questions. And one of them, which I uh, detected on the uh, chat line, we came from uh, it came from Thomas Okello. We're gonna go to Cece Jules uh, in a minute, but uh, let's look at uh, that question on the chat line from Thomas Okello who asked, what is the meaning 
of initializing vector line, I mean, in line 31 of your presentation. What is the meaning of initializing vector? So what is the meaning of initial, initializing the vector? So like here we reserve it, uh, a size for this vector in the memory. So like we are telling the memory that uh, this vector have like this size and this is its place in the memory. And initializing the vector, so like we have like this size in the memory, but it's empty. It doesn't have anything in the memory. So we are just like initializing it with random values, as we can see here. He, like this random function is just returning us uh, a random integer between zero and rand max. And this rand max, as you can see, it's this very huge number. So like we are just like giving each element in this vector just uh, a random numbers. This is uh, what is meaning by initializing uh, the vector. Maybe we can Very add much. the year. I hope you are satisfied, Thomas Okello. The details from uh, Muhammad are clear sufficiently. Uh, going to Sese Jules has announced. This is your turn, Sese. Uh, okay, uh, I would like to first uh, uh, Dr. Dreesen, I told you uh, the yesterday's uh, live class on the optim optimizing uh, DevOps uh, workflow. I need the record because I was absent for my professional for my job requirement. Then a second now for this parallel programming, uh, uh, how they call CUDA. Uh, I want to ask uh, Mr. Mohamed if uh, using the Laravel Laravel uh, platform to to write the code, uh, which is uh, linked with a uh, GitHub. Uh, GitHub. I want to know first this. Uh, what wh what is this uh, platform? Is La is it Laravel platform where you are writing the code and using a GitHub uh, resources? This is the first question. Second question: When when the when the CPU send the uh, how they call send the I think uh, the, the the instruction to the GPU GPU uh, computerize and send back the result to C CPU. So I, I I want to know is it's like this the CPU is working our central processing unit for PCs in general is it like this way is it working and is the, is it like this way the code the code is giving uh, the code is uh, writing uh, based okay. on which the CPU is working. The code right. right now during the session is this way the various interaction between CPU and GPU. Uh, I want to know this is the second question. The third question is to get uh, more resources uh, yeah. after the live class, maybe by document documentation or by record. Let's uh, on, on, I'm on so writing sorry, the code. Sese. I'm so sorry, Sese. Let's give uh, Mohamed a chance to answer okay, the okay. first question so, so that you. he can recall what you asked. Yeah, so yeah. the first question, like, what is this platform? It's just like a Visual Studio Code. I, I use uh, Visual Studio Code. However, if you want, like, to start using CUDA, you need to uh, download the CUDA from here. Uh, just like follow, like, what system you are using: Windows, Linux, uh, Ubuntu, whatever. And then, like, uh, you follow the instructions, uh, and you will have uh, CUDA. And this platform that I'm using is just like a Visual Studio Code. Uh, it have like it's Microsoft, uh, and it have like a lot of like pairs as you can see. Uh, you just like choose whatever like C plus plus whatever you want or whatever you are working with, and this terminal terminal where you can uh, compile your stuff and uh, manage everything you have. Uh, and you can use anything else. It, it's it's not like CUDA is not related to Visual Studio Code. It's just like uh, something that I like to write on, or it's my uh, editor. We can say, but but however you can use whatever you want. Uh, for your second question, the process between the CPU and GPU. So what I am just teaching you right now is a very basic stuff for CUDA. So we are saying like, we are just like in our first hello uh, world uh, CUDA program and the Victor edition, this is a very simple. And I, I told you that if we won't stop uh, uh, the, the CPU from uh, continue, 
before we have our results, then we just use uh, the device synchronize, uh, code the device synchronize, which is stop like the CPU until we receive some output from uh, the GPU. However, maybe your application doesn't need to wait uh, for the results from the GPU and you can continue on the CPU. Meanwhile, uh, the GPU is working. So it's bent on your application and like, what do you want to do uh, about this? So like, like advance it when maybe like later I can give you like more advanced good uh, programs or writing programs. And we'll see like there is uh, a more about this, really more like the, the shared memory and a lot of stuff we didn't talk about yet. Thank you very much, uh, Mohamed. Uh, thank you for your cooperation, CC uh, Jules uh, uh, Raba, as we are now giving an opportunity to uh, Columbus Galaxy. We don't have too much time left. As a matter of fact, uh, we uh, already run out of time. So let's give a chance to uh, Columbus and Galaxy to uh, jump in and ask a question. Thank you, uh, Professor. I am very happy with this presentation. Um, it's like uh, if you don't have uh, uh, both the CPU and the GPU, you cannot run parallel programming. Now, is it in the market that now uh, the equipments that are being this especially the laptops and the, the desktops are we are they going to have both the cpu and the gpu or we already have them on the market so that we can run this parallel programming i hope he has heard me so let me rephrase your question so you are asking about if our uh, computer doesn't have a GPU, can we still use the parallel programming? Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so because uh, I have a host. So let's divide like two concepts together. So like parallel programming, you can use parallel programming uh, even with the CPU, but it will be limited to the number of cores that you have. And you will need like other uh, functions or other libraries that can like utilize the threads of your CPU together, not CUDA, other stuff. But if you have a GPU and you won't use CUDA, then you need 100% to have a GPU. And certain types of GPU, especially NVIDIA GPUs, because like NVIDIA uh, is the one I believe we, we invented the CUDA. Uh, programming language to enable like researcher to use their GPUs uh, with like more computation. So my my answer for you, if you don't have a GPU on your laptop uh, or, or probably an NVIDIA GPU even, then probably you will not be able to use CUDA. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the uh, last question and last comment about uh, this uh, wonderful presentation about parallel programming by our expert Mohammed Ahmed. Uh, we simply regret that we had an issue at the very beginning, but uh, Mohammed is so cooperative that he has already pledged to uh, come back for a portion of that presentation that you didn't get. So. Uh, very, very soon, we're going to have uh, this wonderful man, Mohamed Ahmed Bak, uh, with Atlantic International University in our live classes. So thank you very much, uh, each and every one of you. Uh, uh, Mohamed, you've been really awesome, very professional, very uh, knowledgeable. We thank you very, very much for your phenomenal uh, performance today and we do hope like i just pointed it out uh, you will soon be back with us thank you very much ladies thank and gentlemen i would like to uh, invite you to join me as usual to say thank you
to our thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you bye bye good day thank you thank you bye bye Bye. Have a good day. Good, very good presentation. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. I, 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 I would like. Thank you. Bye. Bye.